Hi there, my name is Holly Hulls. This audio is for ARD450 or History in Context for the following poster presentation. Before I begin, I just want to note that a lot of the terms that are in this poster presentation are from different languages or dead languages. Um, I've tried my best to translate what I can. However, if I can, I'll try and find the next best translation to it. The idea of this poster poster presentation looks into the effect that mythology from many different cultures from like Greek, uh, Roman, Japanese, all these different mythologies have had on what we see on today. So looking at things like politically, technology, culture and how artists have interpreted it, I want to see how this has been impacted. The first aspect that I want to look into are politics. Uh, the myth that stands out for me the most in this section is the myth of Momotaro. During World War II, uh, the Japanese used this myth for propaganda and to try and get people to join the military. Uh, the myth goes like this. Uh, Momotaro was a boy born from a giant peach. Uh, this peach was found floating down a river by an old woman and an old man who, do, who didn't have any children. Uh, when the husband tried to cut the peach open, uh, instead of getting to the pit, uh, Momotaro popped out. Momotaro's name actually translates into two different things, but they're kind of the same. Um, Momo translates into peach, and Taro translates to eldest son of the family. Another translation of both of these words together is peach boy. As Momotaro grew up, he decided to leave home to fight this band of um, oni that have been marauding and trying to take over the land that his family and other people lived on. Oni, uh, the best way to describe them, are a type of demon or ogre. So, uh, they're known for their, den their tendencies of being rather causing issues all the time for other people. Momotaro's plan was to go to the island where the Oni are from. Uh, this island is referred to as Onigashima. Um, it translates into English as Demon Island. While en route, Momotaro met a dog, a monkey, and a pheasant who agreed to help him as long as they got some of his rations, which were these things called kibidango or mullet dumplings. When they all got to this island, they somehow managed to defeat the band of Oni, and in the process, they took the chief as captive and then stole all the gold from the people who they had kidnapped. As I've said before, this myth was used for propaganda in World War II by the Japanese. It resulted in the creation of one of the first films that came out from Japan, which is called Momotaro Umi no Senpe. Uh, the story is relatable, so I think that's why they used it. Uh, the, the entire symbolism of it is that Momotaro represents Jap Japan as a whole. Uh, the companions, which were the dog, the pheasant, and the monkey, represented the citizens of Japan coming together. And the Oni Island, and well, the Oni and the Oni Island uh, are the Allies and the Americans, mainly the Americans because of conflicts like Pearl Harbor and when the American military nuked Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The next section I'm looking into is how mythology has impacted the technology that we see. In 1942, so three years before the end of the Second World War, Rolls-Royce created an engine that is known as the Merlin 61 supercharged aero, aero, aero engine. At the time, this engine was being used by the Royal Air Force to improve the Spitfire then operating within the Fighter Command. The naming tradition was started by director Claude Johnson in 1915 with the Eagle, Hawk and Falcon engines though it is said there are no connection between the name of the engine and Ngartha's legendary wizard Merlin, also known as Emrys, from English folklore. Spitfire is one of the most iconic aircrafts that are known to date, often compared with the Hurricane. The fighter plane was a pivotal role during World War II, although it was not a fixed entity due to it being a subject to a number of key improvements throughout the conflict. The engineer reconnaissance team have stated by using a double-stage supercharger with water-cooled passage between the first and second stages of the supercharger and the cooler between the supercharger outlet and the induction pipe to the rear cylinder, 
it is found possible with the new engine to develop double power double the power output as compared to that of the Merlin 3 the first engine to be fitted within the Spitfires the third section i would like to talk about is art specifically an artist named Gustav Klimt they were born in 1862 and died in 1981 they were an austrian symbolist painter Klimt was one of the most important members of the Vienna art nouveau movement the major art the major artworks include many paintings, murals, and sketches, and many other things. Uh, these are now mostly on display in the Vienna Sex Session Gallery. Klimt mainly looked at the female body. His work is known for having the gold or the colourful decoration to it to help emphasise what his message is. Um, a lot of Klimt's work does tend to be on the phallic or sexual end of the spectrum of art, um, a lot of these paintings are based on this notion. Uh, paintings to note on this are Judith One, created in 1901, The Kiss, created between 1907 and 1908, and The Danae, created in 1907. As said before, Klimt's main themes are to look at the female body, mainly uh, the position of women who are dominant or what is referred to as femme fatale. Femme fatale is the general understanding and term for women who are t who are seen as attractive and especially those who tend to lead men into difficult or dangerous situations. Uh, one creature to note on this are sirens. Over the years, art historians have noted a wide range of influences that Klimt has used to contribute to his style. These are including Egyptian, Minoan, Classical Greek and Byzantine cultures of work. Another big influence for Klimt was an artist named Ulbrich Dürer. Uh, he is known for doing engravings of late medieval European paintings and his mature works are characterized by a rejection of earlier naturalistic styles. Dürer is also known for making use of symbols or symbolic elements that convey psychological ideals and emphasize the freedom of the art tradition culture. The final section that I would like to talk about is culture. Uh, specifically one of the biggest things that happens around the world are the Olympics. They originated 3,000 years ago in ancient Greece and were revived in the 19th century and have become this big thing that happens every two to four years, depending on which Olympics you were referring to. Between the 8th century BC and the 4th century AD, the Games were held every four years in Olympia, Greece, which is in the western Peloponnesian Peninsula in honour of the god Zeus. The first modern Olympics were held in 1896. In Athens, Greece. Since 1994, the Summer and Winter Olympics have been held separately and have alternated every two years. However, they were can they have been cancelled a few times, including once during World War One, twice during World War Two, and again due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The first written note of records of the ancient Greek Games dates back to 776 BC, where a cook named Chrobus won the only event to become the first Olympic champion. Although it is believed that events like this have been going on for centuries prior. Legends and myths state that Heracles, or if you're Roman, Hercules, the son of Zeus, was the, fa was the founder of these games. Zeus, also known as Jupiter, is the god of the sky, thunder, and king of all the gods and men. He is the son of Cronus and Rhea, and is mostly known for his infidelity to his sister and wife Hera, who is also known as Juno, queen of Olympus, and the god of marriage. The ancient Olympics were held every four years between August and September during the festival honoring Zeus. The games were named for their location at Olympia, which is a sacred site near the western coast of the Peloponnesian in Peninsula in southern Greece. The influence was so great that ancient historians began to measure the time by four-year increments between the Olympic Games, also known as Olympiads. I was asked to create a poster presentation looking at a 20 year period on how a particular movement, subject, object and or image and the details of political and technological developments during this time. 
I chose to look at how mythology impacted our culture, technology, art and politics during the 20 years of and around World War II. 